What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to search events by date for our app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to start to search our events by their date. But before we start, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is the day before Thanksgiving here in Vegas. Very windy out today. For the rest of the week, I might not have any videos. It's Thanksgiving, you know how it goes. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But in this video, I want to start to search events by date. And you remember in our app, our main page, we have this calendar. So on this page, you know, we'll probably change this later. I'm going to output whatever events are going on this month. And to do that, we'll have to search events by month. So we'll start to look at how to do that in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So first off, if we come to our events folder and our templates folder, and then our events subfolder, we can come to our home page. And this is the page we currently have. If I come back here and reload, you can see it just has this little calendar. Now, eventually, we'll probably make it to where if there's an event on the 18th of November, for instance, you can click on this 18 and go to the event. We'll look at that in future videos. In this video, we just want to start to learn how to kind of search by dates, right? How do we do that? So it's not that hard. Come back over to our code. And if we go down to our models.py file, you see we've got our event. And we set it up to have an event date field that is a date time field, right? So we already know when the dates are for our events. In fact, if we come back here and go to events, all events, you can see we've always got the date. But how do we look these things up by date? It's kind of weird, right? So that's what we're going to do. So to do that, super easy. Let's head over to our views.py file and I'm going to search for home, this, our home function, right? And you could see way back at the very beginning of this series, we did this calendar stuff, right? That's all all in there. And so we've already got like, for instance, what the current month number is, we've already figured that out. And you know, we're doing stuff with it with our calendar, right? The month and the year. So we know what the current month is. So now we just need to look up in our model events that are happening in that month and that year. And it's pretty easy. So here, let's come down here. And let's say uh, query the events model for dates. So let's create a list. I'm going to call it event list. This is going to be a list of all the events that are happening in this particular month and year. So what we want to do is check our event model, right? And we want to search for objects and we want to filter by a certain thing. So I'm going to put this on multiple lines just so it's easier to, to see here. So if we look back at our model real quick, once again, we see we've got this event date, right? So we can query by the event date. Let me just copy this and let's say event date. And now we go underscore underscore year and we pass in the year. So what year? Well, we want year because up here we calculated the year with date time dot now dot year. Or you could just copy this whole thing and come down here and do it like that if you hadn't already done this somewhere else in this function. But like I said, way back at the beginning of this series, we calculated the year and the month already and assigned it to these two variables. So we can use that. So I'm just going to take this out and put in year. Now that will filter for all of the events happening this year, right? We also want event underscore date underscore underscore month. And we can set that equal to month underscore number, right? And that's it. Why month underscore number? Because again, up here, we already calculated what our current month is and we converted that into an integer. It's now September. So we're going to search for 11 here, right? But we'll just use this variable. This way it's dynamic. Every month this will change. It will update automatically. So whatever the current month is, that's what we'll get. So now we need to pass this into the actual HTML page itself. So let's come down here and pass in our event list like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Head back over to our home page here. That's going to be home.html. And somewhere down here, put a couple of line breaks. Let's put a little h3 tag and say events this month. Dot, dot, dot. So, first of all, we need to see whether or not there are events at all because some months not, might not have events. So, let's create a little if statement. Let's say if event list. So, if there is anything in there, 
do something, do something, else we want to say, sorry, there are no events this month, that, whatever, right? And then as always, we need to end our if, okay? So inside of here, what do we want to do? We want to do something. Well, let's just output all of the events. So we need a for loop. So let's go for event in event list. And I'm just going to go right ahead and in my for, as I always forget. For now, let's just print out the event. And if we want to, we could also do the event dot event underscore date. Because remember in our models.py file, we have this event date. And we can print out any of these things onto the screen, but for now we just want the event and the event date. So let's see, we probably want a line break between each of these as well. All right, and we could tab this in to make it look pretty, but that doesn't look very pretty. So I'll just leave it like that. So, okay, this should work. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over to the website. And if now if we come back here and hit reload events this month, sorry, there are no events this month, right? So let's tinker with this just to see if it actually works. If we come back here to our views.py file, and let's change the event month from the current month to February. That's two. Two, February is the second month. If we save this, head back over here, hit reload. There are two, the Alien Parade, February 27th, and the Charity Basketball Tournament, February 24th. So we know it works. So we can head back over here and change this back again from two to month number. And, you know, we could test this. Let's log in and see if it actually works by creating an event this month. Sorry, there are no events. Event, add event, event name, Thanksgiving Day Parade. Woohoo! And that's going to be 2021, the 11th month. And when's Thanksgiving? Tomorrow, 25th. So let's say 25th. I don't want to put a time. Let's put it at City Park. The manager is me. I am going. Join us for turkey and parade stuff. <laughs> right? So if we submit this, okay, it was submitted. We go to events, look at all events. Let's see, where are we at here? We've got these in opposite order. So it's the last one listing. Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's November 25th at midnight, apparently. <laughs> That's what you get for not putting a, a time in. But okay, let's go back to the homepage and see if that worked. Thanksgiving Day Parade now shows up and we're good to go. So that's one simple way to query by date. There are other ways we can do date ranges. Maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. If we want to actually search for like everything in the next three months or something, we could rig something up like that. But for now, this is sort of the first step into, you know, figuring out what's going on this month and then maybe modifying this calendar to be clickable so that that could be something interesting. And like I said, if you wanted to create a page for each event that you can click on, you could do that. You could add all the information you wanted. You could make these into cards like we've done here, right? Whatever you want to do on this output here, you can do. In fact, it'd probably be pretty easy just to head back over to our code and go to the event list page, event underscore list.html, and just sort of grab this card, right? And then come back over to our home page. And instead of outputting it like this. We just paste in all that card stuff. Now, if we come back over here, hit reload, we've got it like this. Now, these are all centered, so maybe we wanna get rid of that center thing. So let's come down here. Um, let's add a center here. But, let's see, right where it says events this month, I'm gonna close that other center tag. All right, this should look better. Boom, events this month, you know, now we can update and delete if you're logged in. Whatever you wanna do, however you want this to look, you can do that. If we come back over here and test this, go to reviews.py file, change this back to February, just to make sure it looks okay with multiple events. Yeah, see, you know, whatever, however you want, and it's pretty simple. So I am gonna change that back, boom, there we go, and pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. 
My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.